uh, Bibliothèque Caché. That's also a library. Also, we weren't even at the library. That was a different location. <laughs> Here for a little light reading, are we? Not quite, Sparrowson. I'm following the hunting beagle's advice. Don't eat poison pork. The other piece of advice <laughs> that if we want to learn about a member of royalty, we shall hit the library. Oh, that makes sense. Say, Falcon, I've been meaning to ask, since we're in a library at all. Are you a classic literature fan, or do you prefer more modern works? Falcon? I'm thinking. Thinking. I'm thinking. <laughs> I, I truly don't like the classic. I'm sorry for everybody who thinks about yeah, classic. Yeah, but you're Falcon. Does Falcon then? Falcon enjoys modern works? Well, Falcon had has read Don Quixote. Doesn't so... mean he enjoyed it. Yeah, that's my point, right? <laughs> I would think it's funny if <laughs> if he says readings for squares because he was like, like, uh, do that one, readings for squares, especially because he like, he like cushed up to Prince Juan. He's like, oh yeah, I love Don Quixote. And then when he's outside, it was like, I freaking hate reading. Like, don't even talk to me about <laughs> Falcons. Thirsty. Reading is so blasé. Give me a good modern opera any day. Good call. Nothing beats a well-made show. Speaking of which, I hear they're performing La Damnation de Fall at the Opera Comique. I would sell my soul for front row tickets. Get it? Get it? Yeah. Let's see in bargains. Uh, wait, wait. This it's, is me. This is me. It's, it's Nathan the Librarian. <laughs> would you miss yours? Mind lowering your voices. I can oh, I hear your squawking from the other side of the building. Nathan. <laughs> uh, apologies, monsieur. We'll keep it down. What? You're a librarian, aren't you? An astute observation. Yes, monsieur. As the only quiet person in the library, I am most assuredly the librarian. I want to know after this uh, encounter if uh, the representation no. of librarians is accurate. No. No? Already? <laughs> Well, now we have your attention, my friend wants to ask you something. I do? Oh, right, I do. For one, so far all the librarians have met absolutely love to be loud. They look for any opportunities to shout across the library. <laughs> Listen, they should have had a sensitivity uh, uh, representative uh, as a librarian party in this. Uh, okay. In case that was about Don, Don Kiksat. Oh, he's already a friend. Ooh la la. I borrowed this book from a friend. What can you tell us about it? Don Quixote of La Mancha. It's a classic. Everybody has read it. Yeah, everybody. But for those <laughs> who haven't. I'm not going to sit here and summarize a great work of literature for two imbeciles who are too lazy to read. That reminds me of a representation of a librarian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's funnier than what I was going to say. Continue, please. <laughs> no, but I expect you to, monsieur. But can you tell us about the physical book itself? This particular book didn't come from any library, if that's what you're asking. See? There's no library card, stamp or card. I assume it was signed from a bookshop, a French book, if the French translation and publishing information wasn't a giveaway. He's, he's really bratty. <laughs> it's like you're wasting my time. Just open the book and read the information. The story you bought in front is on the cover. Get out of my face! I, I see. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Or can I get back to work? Poor Nathan. <laughs> Why would Nathan just casually just say, oh yeah, actually. Can you tell us about the Spanish monarchy? 
Nathan, you seem like a scholarly well-read individual. I'm sure you're up to date on general political news and the like. I don't need your praise. Spit <laughs> out whatever imbecile question is in the back of your throat. Listen, it's a little rude, but like, I get it. Like, Nathan literally has presented himself as like, y'all are wasting my time. I have things I need to do. Like, can you please just... And you're just quick. like, can you and tell us like, about um, the Spanish Revolution? Yeah, can you just give us a history lesson? It's like, I have things to do. I, there would be every, I would like nothing more than to not talk to you right now. And never have to again. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we understand that the Spanish throne is currently under dispute. Can you give us a brief rundown on who the contenders are? That's not a librarian's job. What a trivial question. Even an elementary school child can name the immediate heirs to every throne in Europe. Yeah, but the, for the sake of those ch children who slept through that class, can you refresh our memories? Very well. Pay attention, because I'm not repeating myself. The current reigning monarch of Spain is Queen Regnant Isabella II of the House of Bourbon, daughter of King Ferdinand VII. Upon her death, the crown will likely fall to her husband, King Consort Francis, Duke of Cadiz. Although it is certainly possible that an immediate family member could stake a claim. However, the Queen's position is currently being disputed by the Carlists, headed by the Count of Mullen. I hope that answers your question. Did you catch all of that, Sparrow Son? Not a word. Are we actually interested in a Prince Juan Querido of Spain? I don't think I heard that name in your explanation. A Prince Juan Querido? Is that what you said? Monsieur, I think you've been misinformed. There is no current Prince of Spain, and I'm not even sure Corrido is a real name. It's certainly no line of any Spanish monarchy. Mm, how strange. What does this mean, Falcon? One thing is for sure, our client is not the Prince of Spain. Maybe he's a delusional lunatic, maybe he's involved. And maybe he's involving us in some sort of con. Long before the trial, but it may be in our interest to confront this one directly and get some answers. Right. Are you two quite done chit chatting? That's all. Well, Monsieur, we are done here. Thank you for your time. <laughs> and I bid you good day. He was fun. I did not he like doing that voice. <laughs> okay, we're gone. Um. The Palace de Justice. That's where he is, and it's not going to take us time. Is he? Juan Carrillo? He's in jail, yeah. I thought he was in Larkin's. The prison. Oh, you're right, you're right. The Palace of Justice is the court. Did you want to go to the Palace of Justice or the Constitution? Oh, we're going to talk to, we're gonna talk to Juan. Hey, you again? Visiting hours are over. Come back later. I have no time for your quibbling, Monsieur. Stand aside. You can't talk to me like that. I most certainly can. We have reason to believe that you are causing a suspect on the false pretense. That is in direct violations of statutes 204B and 488C of the French Criminal Code of Justice. 
Failure to comply with our request may result in you, yes, you, monsieur, being held directly responsible for any consequential legal action. All right, all right. Don't need to break out legalese on me. I'll go open the cell. Wow, Falcon, how did you memorize those criminal codes? Memorize? Come on, Zverasa, learn how to bluff. Ah, uh, Senor Frocon, it's so easy to see you again. You have some good news about my case, I hope. Confront politely. Lee San Juan, in order to maximize our chances of successful trial, I need to know every bit of information. I can't work with half truths. If you tell me one thing and the prosecution evidence tell me another, then we're both in trouble. I'm afraid I don't quite follow, senor. Do you want me to spell it out? I know that you are not the Prince of Spain. I know that your name is not Juan Carito. Where is this coming from? I assure you, senor, that I am who I claim to be. If you want your trout to be a fast, then you do not need my help. Come on, Sparrowson, we are leaving. Wait, wait, wait. Calm yourself, Monsieur Flurkin. I'll reveal all. <clears throat> That's you. Did you say, Monsieur? What happened to your Spanish accent? His suspicions are well placed. Juan Curido is not my real name, and I am not a Spanish prince. That was just a persona I concocted for the purpose of getting arrested. Persona 5, Royale. Now a Nintendo Switch. I'll lose $59.99. Oh, that's too expensive for it. <laughs> so what is your real name? So what is your real name? What's in the name? It's just an empty label. A vapid reflection of who we really are. Today I am Juan Corrido, the Prince of Spain. Tomorrow I may be Bruno Rea, a pauper living under a bridge of the sin. But that doesn't change who I am or what I do. That didn't really answer my question? No, I suppose it didn't. But you're a smart bird, Fr Monsieur Fulcan. I suspect that you already know my real name. It's a business card. Business card. card. He's Renard Volpe. You're Renard Volpe, private investigator. Very astute. And you are Monsieur Furcon, private defense attorney. That wasn't always your name, was it, Monsieur Furcon? Just like me, you know how to adopt a new persona on a whim. Change your name, Falcon. I didn't know that. This isn't about me. Juan, Renard, Monsieur, we're trying to uncover the truth here. Of course. So what truth is it that you are attempting to uncover, Monsieur Percon? Why would you want to get arrested? Why wouldn't you want to get arrested? Hmm, you're putting me in a difficult position, Monsieur. If I tell you the full story, I'd be pulling, putting someone else in danger. How about this? I'll tell you a story. I like stories. There was a girl, a mademoiselle, who was in a great deal of debt. Okay, uh, the... My headset to the thing again. Terrible. There we go. It's an audio system only fix it now. Everyone has debt these days, monsieur. Indeed. This particular mademoiselle was indebted to a very powerful man, and that man wished to collect. The mademoiselle had no means of paying, so the man offered her a deal. Murder this man, and I will forget what you are owed. Refuse, and I will reap what I am owed from your parents. With no alternative options, the mademoiselle accepted. But another man, a gallant knight with foolish, archaic notions of chivalry, Heard them our mademoiselle's story. 
The knight knew that murder was inevitable, but he saw a way to take the fall in the mademoiselle's place. Do you understand what I am saying, monsieur? I understand. I understand, monsieur. To be honest, I wasn't. it wasn't the subtlest of allegories. Ah, storytelling was never my strong suit. But I'm glad that you are seeing things from my perspective. Hopefully that shed, shed some light on the situation. If I may ask, monsieur, why did you not just go to the police with the information that you had? The police are not always an option. When a bit, what is a man to do when the justice system itself is the problem? Agreed. i would let you know when I figured it out, monsieur. We we'll learn it. Perhaps we should talk about it something else in the meantime. No, uh, that's all. <laughs> I don't have any more. I don't have any more questions for you, Juan. I think we've learned all we can for now. Really? I don't feel that we've learned very much. Oh, Monsieur Falcon, before I forget. Could you find Mousy and ask him whether the birds have successfully flown south for the winter? Whether the birds have flown south? Uh, what is that? Some sort of cord? Something like that. But rest assured, Monsieur, that this does not that this does directly pertain to the case. Well if you have time, I'll be sure to let Mousy know. Let's make a move, Sparrow Son. The trial day is approaching. Right. A new day. Yeah, we should, we've completely botched the chocolate. But let's we? just this. Well, because we have to go to court. I mean, we could go to the chocolate. Yeah, let's try. Yeah, it doesn't take a day. Falcon, what are you doing? It's trial day. We have a Spanish prince to defend. All right, what was I thinking? Oh, hey there, Miss Mango. Bonjour. <laughs> Welcome. We are, are in you? Bird France. We are in Bird France. Once again, Falcon and Sparrowson find themselves waiting outside the doors of the Tribunal de Grande Instance. <laughs> or you feel nervous, Falcon? Uh... Mango says, ah, bonjour, comment ça va? Oh, ça va bien, ça va bien et toi? <laughs> yeah, I'm very nervous this time around. Oh, you're nervous? We don't have anything! <laughs> we messed it up! <laughs> we messed up the swan. I don't think we can mess up we the case. We messed up the chocolate. We don't have any <laughs> clues. We know that our client is not who he told us he was. <laughs> oh, great. That's so useful. <laughs> of course I'm nervous. What have we learned about Prisoan? What do we know about the Nothing! Mango said, Cespian, Trabian. Oh, we. Oui. Easy there, Falcon. We can do this. Oh. Senor Falcon, I trust everything. <laughs> it's okay, we've established that it's a fake Spanish accent. Still, I want to try to do the fake Spanish accent. <laughs> Senor Falcon, I trust everything is in over order. Absolutely. I have every intention of bringing truth to light in this tribe. Ah, such confidence. That's magnificent to see. In bringing the truth to light, you say, an admirable goal. No more jousting at imaginary giants. Get it? That's a Duncan Monte reference. Oh, that'd be Caesar Yammer and the door's opening. Oh, Mingy, you love the idea in this game? You really want to play it? You should. We're only in, like, the second case. It's taking us a lot yeah. longer than I expected. Well, it's, it's funny, it's silly, and th there doesn't seem to be, like, a like a dead end condition like even if you mess up the story is continuing so that's fun yeah 
Here we go. Buenas suertes, senor Falcon. Because we're probably going to lose. We will. You just said there's no dead end condition. <laughs> yeah, but we're probably going to lose this case. Are we ready? Can you lose a case? We're ready. I, I hope not. But maybe. <laughs> Uh, the king of horses. <laughs> JJ. I was going to say, yeah, very, very evil. Severy. Nervous. Why would I be nervous? I'm not nervous. I'm as, I'm as calm as a cuckoo. You're the nervous one. Little Karoom is nervous. <laughs> Whoa, cool, cool your father's falcon. <laughs> Terrible. You can't even maintain a stoic facade. I thought this trial would be the perfect opportunity for you to redeem your previous embarrassments. But if this is how you act before the trial has even started. I'm so upset that we're going to give this rooster <laughs> the satisfaction of being right. You could Why? say he's a bit cocky. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Why, you pompous tailed posture perfect! Oh, oh, wait. Are you this judge now, too? Sure. <clears throat> order, order. Let's all settle down. Court is now in session. Is this one of the cultists? Yeah, it is. We, I was voicing a Kiwi judge the other day. I was hoping I would continue the workshop. What is it? Angus says stoic facades are overrated anyways. Is it me or does the primary judge look hairier today? That's a different judge than the one who decided over Dam Catalan's trial you do first. There's more than one. Oh, still, it's a little strange, isn't it? Listen, the Ace Attorney games, there's a Canadian one. Yeah, but Japanese I mean, they're brothers. I wonder if the Japanese one is related to the other two. Uh, to the ones in the main, like the original Yeah, like games. historically, yeah. Uh, they never say the last name. Actually, I think in the Miles Edgeworth games, I think they say the judge's last name. I don't think it's the same, so I don't know. I mean... Jigoku could have had daughters. But did he? I don't know. Didn't he get murdered, right? Death penalty and all that? Uh, unclear. Oh, he Maybe. might have had kids before. Uh, anyway. Either way. Um, it's cool. a little strange. It is a little, I suppose. Excuse me, Your Honor. I was under the impression that Judge Maxime would be riding over this case. Where is he? Judge Maxime has gone on temporary sick leave due to a terrible accident with a flight of stairs. Be rest assured, assessors, prosecutor, defense, and members of the jury that I am more than qualified to fill his shoes. Without further ado, let the show underway. This is the trial of Prince Juan Guerrero, who stands accused of murdering Major Howe and of comprising to murder the king himself. Where's Major Howe? Did we have a picture of Major Howe? We do. Okay. What is he? Is a monkey? Looks like a monkey to me. Oh, like a howler monkey. Uh, oh. Uh, get it. Roll call! The defense is present and ready, your honor. The prosecution is ready, your honor. Good. Very good. I expect this to be a nice, speedy trial. I don't want to see this dragged out by technicalities and bureaucracy. Well said, Your Honor. I expect that once the court sees the overwhelming evidence, this trial will be over in five minutes. Oh, it's wow. Really unfortunate that's, that's very, uh, that's very 
uh, Manfred von Karma energy. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say also bold to presume that it's going to take me uh, less than five minutes to read one line of dialogue. <laughs> five a minutes? Just messing with your head, Falcon. Keep it together. So we're all on the same page. Excellent. Prosecutor, please call your first witness to the stand. Very well. I call the pro police officer who investigated the crime scene. I call upon Inspector Juste Just Valerde. Step up to the stand, Inspector, and recite the oath. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please recite your name and occupation for the court record. My name is Inspector Just Juste Velarde. I'm a servant to the law, scourged to the gutter rats. That will do, Inspector. We've all heard your monologue before. <laughs> what? Ace Attorney, but what if they were all birds and evil? Whoa, Coco Rico is really going for a speed record, isn't he? Speed running. <laughs> no. Matt, speed running court. Speed, speed running court. <laughs> oh no, he glitched. He no clipped. <laughs> he no clipped pla past the first witness. Oh no! <laughs> he didn't even need to grab <laughs> he didn't even to grab the evidence. <laughs> now, you could tell us what you witnessed on the morning of the 7th of January. Oh no, he skipped to the end verdict! <laughs> through, through loading up! Yeah, frame perfect, uh, quick save and quick load. And, and half of a button press. Yeah, oh, pick up the universe is now! Of course. Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, I was called to lose. 10 o'clock? Ten o at 10 o'clock in the morning, I was called to Louvre's <laughs> Grand Gallery by one of the King's Royal Guards. Did you just say o'clock? <laughs> there, I saw Prince Juan, King Louis Philippe, the corpse of Major Howell with a rose in hand, and over two dozen citizens. The citizens of the King himself all attest to seeing Major Howell take the rose from the Prince Juan's hand and then promptly dropping dead. And what did the Morgan cover upon examining of the corpse? The coroner determined with absolute certainty that Major Howell died of poisoning. Aside from the prick upon the finger, there was no sign of external harm to Major Howell's body. Therefore, the poison rose must have been the cause of death. Putting the pieces together, that does seem very implicative of the Prince. I have no further questions. <clears throat> Damn, I was hoping the coroner's report would determine that the guy died from a freak out attack or something. That would make for a particularly speedy trial, wouldn't it? But no, we aren't so lucky. <laughs> yeah, you have to deal with the RNG of a different motive every time. <laughs> something else must be amiss of the old bird's testimony. Right, I'll tear it apart. So Kokoriko is like, uh soft resetting for the RNG to get the results he wants. To get the shiny judge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the animations on the shiny judge are like 0.3 frames uh, faster, so he can get a better time. <laughs> Yo, Anna, I wish to cross-examine the witness. Falcon, was it? Don't waste the court's time. A high-ranking police officer would never lie on the witness stand. To accuse the inspector of lying. I just wanted that. I wanted to make sure that every base is properly covered. Uh, this sounds like pointless nitpicking to me, but I'll allow it for now. Go on, Falcon. Do your cross examination. Thank you, Mango. Yeah. For the compliment voice for the rooster. <laughs> Like yeah, just... we th we thrive in vo in uh, voicing evil. <laughs> kind of unfortunate. Select a statement to examine. <laughs> did did, did Volerti say it himself? Uh, make a statement. 
Didn't he? I just figured that was the narrator. Oh, I thought I had his name. Uh, so is it 10 o'clock? Major Howell, two dozen citizens, or poisoning? Man, I might actually need your help with this one. We don't, we didn't get anything conclusive. Uh, the 10 o'clock obviously might be funny, but I don't know how many times we get to like mess up. I didn't think there was a punishment for that, maybe. They, they imply that there was a punishment in the last trial. They imply that in original Ace Attorney games. Oh, fair. Then 10 o'clock. So this is up go. to you. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, you say? Correct. 10 o'clock. <laughs> Surely you mean o'clock. <laughs> Surely you meant to say o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock. I beg your pardon. You clucked? Like a chicken? JJ, do you really want to kick this trial by picking on petty pronunciation peculiarities? Who, who, uh, who, who does that? What, what prosecutor does that? What? They, was it um, Diego Armando Godot what? that like uh, does alliteration where he like repeats the same? Oh, I didn't remember anybody do alliteration. I think there. I think Diego Armando might. Uh, I mean. Francisco Van Karma yet does alliteration with all the fools. Oh yeah, yeah, that's I think. If that's you count that about. as alliteration, foolish, fool, hardly fool, who foolishly. I think that's what I was thinking <laughs> about. Yeah, who foolishly fools around? Foolishly fools the fool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh... <laughs> yes, absolutely. Why would the inspector choose to say ten o'clock and not rather than ten o'clock? Really, now this is a ridiculous thing to pick up on. Yes, JJ, us roosters have been known to cluck on occasion. It's a habit. Get over it. This is such blatant time waste. A stalling. A fool. Lost a little favor of the jury. Oh, wow. See, see, okay, well, now we know. <laughs> Another actually question moves. on Inspector Velody's arrival at 10 o'clock. Yes. You have another one for 10 o'clock? Yeah. How long did it take you to arrive? Is it the time you were called? How long did it take you to arrive at the crime scene? Around five minutes. I happened to be in the neighboring Palais Royal at the time, so it was a simple journey. Then I'm guessing that made your home. Major Hull would have been dead for around 10 minutes by the time you arrived. That would be a fair estimate. Plenty of time for a bad guy to slip away, huh? That's definitely a possibility. I don't think the court would appreciate my one speculation, though. Another question about his arrival of 10 o'clock? No. What statement of question? Uh, the two dozen citizens. Inspector, you said that there were two dozen citizens, all of whom attest to see my client deliver the poison rose. Oh boy, when you put it like that, our situation seems a little dire, doesn't it? Correct. We collected precisely two, 22 testimonies, and there were no major inconsistencies. What exactly did they do? I would like some further details. What exactly did those testimonies say? Each t citizen attested to seeing the king and his entourage approaching the new painting in the Grand Gallery. They each heard the king deliver a short speech who was on the subject of progress and societal improvements and whatnot. There were some applause, then Prince Juan stepped onto the crowd and approached the king with a rose in hand. Each person then saw Major Howell take the rose from Prince Juan and saw each each person saw Major Howell promptly drop dead. See? Some of the descriptions of the man's death were quite graphic. He convulsed, twisted, and spasmed, said one witness. His mouth frothed like it was a rabid lunatic, said another. Thank you, Inspector. I think we see we get the picture. Another 
question about testimony? Mm. Yeah, sure. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind, I have no more questions about the testimony of the citizens. Poisoning. Inspector, you said that the corner of the tamid with certain tea that made your helmets go by poison. Correct. He saw in the sign. He stated the signs and symptoms were textbook. There was no possibility that his death was natural. What kind of poison one. Uh. The coroner mentioned specifically what kind of poison it was. He was not certain. At first, the coroner point posted that it was a plant born poison, like those that of the aconite flower. But when he learned how fast poison taken effect, he noted this was an atypical of aconite. Consequently, he suggested that may have been some newly engineered concoction. A newly engineered poison, you say? Well, that only reaffirms that this was a very deliberate assassination attempt. Indeed. Another question on the poison? Yeah. How was he poisoned? How exactly was Major Hal poisoned? What was the delivery mechanism? His finger was pricked by poison rose. He even commented out loud about it the second before dying. All 22 citizens who witnessed the murder attested to seeing and hearing this. Is there any possibility that he was poisoned by something else? What an absurd thing to ask, JJ. You just heard that 22 people saw the victim prick his finger and die. What are you suggesting? That the pricked finger had no relation to the poisoning? That's exactly what I'm saying. That is exactly what I am saying. I don't doubt that Mitchell Hill was poisoned, but I do doubt that the rose was the cause. Unbelievable. Only a total buffoon would fail to see the blatant link here. JJ, as it is to sit, sit here and lecture you on the basics, as tempting as it is to sit here and lecture you on the basics of cause and effect, I'll end this discussion painlessly. Spectre, please tell the defense that you found traces of poison on the thorns of the rose itself. This should alleviate all doubt that the rose was, in fact, the poison delivery mechanism. Actually, I can't tell him that. I dread to ask, but why not? We didn't check the rose for trace of the poison. It just seemed obvious the rose caused the poisoning, given the timing of the incident. And now would be a good time to make a test. Here's a marvelous thought. We prick the finger of the defendant with the rose. If there is no poison on the rose, then Prince Juan lives. And he is free to go. If the rose is poisoned and the prince dies, that's okay, because the punishment we just and fitting of the crime. A marvelous suggestion. Is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? A witch trial? This is in America, Severine. That's not how we do things here. Also, Severin doesn't have the accent de trois in, in that version for some reason. Hmm. That's Calm weird that they would... feathers, JJ. It was clearly a joke. There are far more humane ways for testing for poison. I'm sure the inspector will perform his duties with due diligence. Actually, we won't be able to test the roads for poison at all. Why is that? Given the dangerous nature of the flower, it was destroyed by the police force. We burned it to, a to ashes. What? Yes. Just, such unprofessionalism. If you have no way <laughs> to know whether the rose was poisoned, then this whole trial ought to be called into question. Why would you destroy the murder weapon before the court case, even? Yeah, right? <laughs> like, just put in a baggie. Let's try, JJ, but through, through process of reasoning by elimination, we can still deduce with absolute certainty that the rose was poisoned. 
In other words, there was nothing else at the crime scene that could have caused the poisoning. Wrong! There was something else at the crime scene that could have contained the poison, but then the investigative police blindly overlooked. The bar of chocolate. <laughs> I feel like we are lacking evidence here, but... <laughs> Look at this. What am I supposed to be looking at? It is a paper wrapper to a piece of chocolate. It was found in the Louvre, the Salle du Tir, to be precise, and we can date its consumption to the day of the incident. You're not suggesting. That's a major how it a piece of poison a lot uh, moments before he most certainly died I most certainly am oh. hmm. intriguing pretty Intrig convincing gain a little favor with the jury are you back to neutral now <laughs> did you see this, this rapper at the crime scene for yourself inspector the police force do not have the time nor resources to trawl every piece of trash in every crime scene I'm afraid words you overlooked it Tsk. astoundingly unprofessionalism the prosecution is right to be disgusted what a disgraceful display inspector yeah he's ugly too <laughs> <laughs> i offer my apologies your honor don't want your apologies I want you to do your damn job properly. Get off the witness podium before I kick you off myself. As you wish. I'll take my leave. Until next time, messieurs. Let me get this straight. The chocolate wrapper was found at the crime scene. Incorrect. Do you have reason to believe that it was consumed on the day of the incident? I do. I have an expert food tasting witness who is willing to testify if need be. You have a foodie witness? I don't recall anyone like that. Who else are you talking about, Falcon? Oh, I see. <laughs> hmm, but do you know for certain that Major Howell consumed this chocolate? Well, that is a fact we are still investigating. I see. Do you have evidence that this chocolate was in fact poisoned? Again, that is something that we may require a little more time to definitely prove. So then, in actuality, you do not have evidence that Major Howell consumed some poisoned chocolate. Instead, you have a solitary piece of rubbish that you pl plucked straight out of the gutter. Sorry. I have, I'm gonna have to get new headphones. I can't believe this. But these are old headphones. You can always uh, take the ones you let me borrow back. I have the... That's weak, I even for you, I JJ. Oh, okay. No, that this time it's the game. Wow. Uh, what if I do? Yeah, when? See now. Let's move things along. I have another witness I would like to summon. Nope, still doing it. He is a man who claims to have had an excellent view of the people going in and out of the Louvre at the time of the incident. Uh. Let's see if I uh. Let me open. Uh, yeah, I I can easily get, I can afford to get new headphones at this point. I just. Let's try now. There we go. Mm, I, hello, am I? Yep. I call upon Monsieur Twissant Kingley. 